Okay, mushroom trip number four. I'm only doing this because that's the lingo that they use um, on these forms. Um, I call them a vision quest, though. So, this is going to be pretty short, like five minutes. Um, so, this trip was where I was tapped in. So, me being tapped in. I was able to go to different places and I was sharing consciousness with people from different places. I can't really explain this part, but I'll try. Um, yeah, they're trying to stop me from uploading these videos. So I'm just going to take a break from that and I'm going to make the next video. Okay, so you know how you hear that uh, party music when you go to a rave? So that shit was just in my head. And I'm like, oh God, what is happening? I hope I'm not about to go to no gay bar. That's what I thought was happening because it was like... But it wasn't. It was like I was watching these humanoids in the club. It was really purpley. Uh, these lights. You'll understand the lights if you go under. Um, but it was this man who looked like a teenager, but I think he was a man because I think these humanoids were little were people. But he was like, dooch, 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 like, and it was like, um, I was with him at the club. He was having a ball. And I was trying to understand it. But everything that he felt and everything he heard and saw, I felt, heard, and saw. So I had tapped into consciousness with him. And then I left and I was sad when I left because it felt... His energy was beautiful and happy. So, I'm sitting down on the couch. I got all my crystals in front of me. And I start to, one at a time, hold the crystals. The first one was my selenite. So while I was under, I was holding my selenite and I got to share the consciousness with my crystal and she took me to her planet. Her planet is, you have to understand that fairy tales come from a place, it comes from a memory. It's not your imagination. It's a memory. They just like to tell you it's an imagination. So when you see unicorns and rainbows, waterfalls, it's a place that they've been to. That's what her land is. Selenite. Selenite. This crystal cannot hold negative energy at all. If the devil picked this up, it would not even attach itself to this. Her land is that of unicorns and rainbows and peace and beauty. It's just amazing. So I shared her consciousness. And I'm losing some of my memories, but once I got that and was all in a happy space, I touch moldy, right? Moldavite. Some of you know what moldavite is. So, so I touched moldy. Oh, oh, oh. 
she does not have a happy place like selenite and oh my god if you seen star trek let's just say star trek if you seen star trek they got these people these klingons right klingons um, and they always trying to war and shit, trying to destroy everything. So much so that they destroy their own people, their own planet, and they, they blew up, right? So Modi showed me. What her place look like now. And it is dark. Black and red destruction just destroy just what's left over after a battle that destroyed everything good and bad and I thought to myself wow that's so sad so I stopped touching my crystals because it's hard enough to deal with what I can understand the humanity of us the flesh of the flesh and the animals but to feel the sadness from the rocks. What you do with that? You know, ignorant people say, you're as stupid as a rock. Rocks, crystals are rocks. So rocks hold all of the information of the world, the planet, the times. They are always here. They've always been here. They'll always be here. So they have consciousness and memory so after I put moldy down they sent me on re remote viewing so I went up to space and I guess I'm on um somebody's spaceship but I am hovering and I looked down and I see a child, and she's like in fetal position, balled up on the floor, sad. I think she was crying. And the room was pink with black little stars, I guess, as a design on a border. So it was like a child's room. And the windows were like on the spaceship, like on Star Trek. So because when you look out, you just see the galaxy. And I remember saying, why are y'all showing me that? While I was under. And then I said to myself. Well if they showing you that. They're saying that all of this is real. Okay. So. I got more information about. Entities. And it was overwhelming. And I remember going for my blanket from my mom my mom gave me this blanket 16 years ago it is the only blanket I use and I have of course others but because she gave it to me I um, that's my safety net so I told my husband I needed to feel safe so he got my blanket and he covered me up and just as he tucked me this woman's voice started singing this melody you know that um instrument and you do like it's like um i don't know what that's called it's so big and you got to sit down and then it strings and you just do like that i forget what it's called but she was playing that instrument and she was singing in a with a tone that was, oh my God. I mean, I searched Google for about two weeks trying to find anything that sound like that. And there's nothing. But when I said I was in distress, she sung me a song that made me feel more comforted than when I was with my grandma, Letty, and my mom together. So she was higher than all of them. And just like that, I was back on track. And so while I was under, I said, 
Soul family, come find me. Soul family, come find me. Soul family, come find me. It's time. I don't know why I said that. After she sung to me, I said that. That was in November. <laughs> Ooh, that was in November. So, December the 1st, my professor calls my husband and say, I want y'all to come over because I want y'all to meet this shaman I know. So, I was like, hey, I'm fucking down to see a shaman. Because at that time, I had been on my period for 78 days, I believe it was. And we had been to the hospital emergency room three times and two um, regular obstetrician, whatever, doctors. And none of them could figure out what was wrong with me. They said that um, there was a mass in my uterus that they would call a fibroid but it's not acting like a fibroid it's not doing anything a fibroid does and right next to that mass is a smaller mass that they have no idea at all what it is and so we can't help you so okay i went to see the damn shaman so he a black guy, you know, from Africa, and we talking. He young. He like, I don't know, he's like 26, 28, something like that. And um, so we talking, we talking, and I asked him, I said, am I dying? He said, no, you just got to get the parasite out. And when the fuck he said, get the parasite out, it all went back to my original vision quest. When they showed me the monster eating my baby, that shit clicked. <laughs> it probably didn't click to anybody else, but for me, I'm just was dumbfounded. It clicked. So I said, oh nigga, a parasite. So he said, when I go home, I'm gonna send you a package. And I'm gonna get everything together. So, when he got home, wait, I'm moving too far ahead. My professor is not like us. She's, she's a professor. She believes in what she reads, what she teaches, what she can grasp. So, her meeting this guy, the way she did... And her bringing him into our life the way she did had nothing at all to do with her. I said, soul family, come find me. So when my husband and, and I and my soul brother, I'll leave it at that, I won't say no names. We went in the backyard to smoke a blunt. And um, he said, I wanted to talk to you in private, meaning not around my professor. Because um, not everybody can handle what's happening. So he starts to tell me all this shit about myself. Past, present, future. And my husband is just looking like, oh my God. And he says, you got that seven on your hand. And you looking everywhere else but within. When you are the founder 
you made the foundation. You have more power than all of us. And you know more than me. He said, you built the foundation. Which made everything clear because I've been obsessed with architect all my life, but I have no desire to be an architect. I just know things. I've always known certain things. So it just started to, to click and make sense while I'm talking to him. And, you know, so we talking and we talking and we asked him, you know, are you in a relationship? And he was like, nah, I ain't in no relationship. And he said, how can you be in a relationship if what you say out your mouth, the person you would think you fucking crazy? And I thought to myself, thank you, creator, for giving me my husband because we are always on the same page. So I've just felt really grateful in that moment that I had a counterpart who understands my journey, what I'm going through, who understands what I am. He's always understood what I am since we were 16 years old. Um. But anyway, I said all of that to say, to let you know that if you call, they come. So if you are surrounded by people who don't get you, don't understand you and you're processing your, um, where you are, you call your soul family, they'll show up. <laughs> they keep showing up to me. Keep on. They just keep on showing up. And every single time I'm amazed, like what? But I'm the one that called it. So, yeah, that was my my last trip. And it brought me peace. And it got the parasite out of me. And it um, rebuilt me a whole new uterus. I know y'all understand that, but they built me a whole new uterus. They got that parasite out. And... I'm healthy. There are still some medical things that I deal with. But after being 100% sick for the entirety of my life, I'm only 25% sick now. And that's tolerable. I could deal with that. So, the message I'll give you in this is Ask and you shall receive. Go within. Don't look without it. Out on the outside. Always go within. Meditation is everything. Um, I'm horrible at meditating. I always fall asleep. But. Uh, phone dying. Sorry, my phone dying. So, yeah. Just be open-minded. Be open-minded. 